I remember the first time I actually went on an international tour was with Guru. You know what I mean? You know, God bless him, man. And, um, you know, that was my first real international tour with Guru's Jazzmatazz. And uh, I remember one time we went to Vienna, Austria, man. It was like sitting room only. I mean, you know, we had like a thousand, you know, Viennans, you know, staring us down. And, you know, we was on stage, you know, Donald Byrd is with us and, you know, and Dia Davenport, great, great tour. It was like a two week tour. This is like towards the end of the tour. And the guy on stage, sound guy on stage, you know, there's a sound, you know, there's usually a guy on stage doing sound and the guy in the house. Well, the guy on stage was, you know, was fidgeting with monitors and stuff and his feedback and Guru got so frustrated, man, that he just jumped to the side, man. Him and the dude started scrapping right there, you know, and we still jamming and stuff. Donald Byrd still playing the sax and, you know, the drumming, the band's rolling, you know, Guru's on the sidelines throwing down with this dude. We got like a thousand Viennans looking at us, man. That was pretty intense, you know. We didn't know if we was just gonna get bum rushed or what, man, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, shout out to my man Owen Lamb. He broke it up, he broke up the scuffle. Guru jumped right back on cue into the second verse and was right there again, you know what I mean? It's like he just, it actually was the third verse. Yeah, he stepped out and the whole second verse, it was just us, you know what I'm saying? He's over there scrapping on the side, man. And he comes back right on cue for his third verse, you know? So that was pretty crazy, man. Shout out to Guru, no doubt. Oh man, rocking with the beat nuts has been everything from fights to getting drunk to, you know, missing planes to, you know, getting stoned to, you know, all kind of groupy activity, of course, you know, girls is going to be girls and try to throw themselves at dudes, you know what I mean? But, you know, you got to maintain that professionalism, you know what I'm saying? I grew that face. <laughs> tell you one groupie story I had. This is a personal Tony Touch tour. I was out in Tampa, man, and I was doing, I was on stage, you know, 2,000 heads out there, Tampa, killing it. And then they had these little stairs on the sides, so there was a few ladies posted up on, on the sides and stuff. And every time I would look to the left, man, there was this one girl in the miniskirt, she just kept flashing me, dude. She ain't had no panties on or nothing. So I was like distracted the whole night, trying to keep my focus, you know what I mean? And here, you know, every time I look to the left, this girl, she's flashing me and shit. So that was pretty crazy right there too, man, word. As a, you know, as a DJ, you know, I've had the opportunity to, you know, DJ for a lot of acts, like I said, Goose, Jazzmatazz, and uh, Beat Nuts, and, and, and Cypress Hill was, was one of them. Usually uh, when Muggs doesn't do it, this kid Julio G fills in, and I don't think Julio G was available for this, this two week run, so I filled in. We had this thing going on that anytime somebody goofed up on stage or missed their cue or something like that, Be Real would throw like a, a yellow flag on the stage, you know, kind of like on some referee shit, you know? And uh, so every, somebody was always goofing around or whatever, and you know, you see people throwing flags on the play. One of the last tour dates, um, I remember Be Real on stage and he missed his cue. So you got the whole band, Bobo, myself, everybody throwing yellow flags at him and stuff like that. So I was pretty bugged out, you know what I mean? I had a great time with those Cypress Hill heads though, man, for real. KRS One, I've had the pleasure of DJing for KRS a few times, you know what I mean? We did LA recently, saw the place down. I just happened to be in town when he was gigging. He asked me to come rock with him, you know what I mean? We freestyled the whole routine, you know what I'm saying? And. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had some of it was orchestrated, but a lot of stuff was just on the fly, you know what I mean? And that's what I loved about working with him was that he was able, he was able to bounce off of that and I was able to bounce off of him and just improvise on the spot. You know I mean, he's probably the best performer I've ever had the opportunity to work with. So shout out to KRS-One, no doubt. Somebody that's that powerful or important, you know what I'm saying, can get you killed. You know, so it's like, you know what? I don't want your money. I don't even want to do the show. The show's not ready yet. He's supposed to be Frank Sinatra's grand, great grandson, right? That's what I thought he was. I don't know. I don't check it out. You know, I meet so many people. He flips on the lady at the thing. He signs one piece of paper. They had a freaking G4 sitting on the tarmac in 15 minutes. There was a nigga in the audience with a goddamn shocker in a goddamn audience. This nigga was jumping with me, just shocking the shit out of me every five seconds. The producers that I was raised off of, like, you know, Pete Rock, the Premier, Muggs, these dudes, the way that they became popping as producers was they produced albums that were classics first. 